Seen Blade is the deadliest. Yo guys, this is a game against Zoe in Low Masters. I went to the standard electrocute page with teleport and flash, but I feel like I found a good build in Axiom Rush into Profane, into Grudge, and then it's sort of into whatever you want, but I like to go Edge of Night usually because you need health at that point of the game. And yeah, let's see how this game went. So I end up going for a ward on the enemy wraiths at about 1 minute and 8 seconds. And that's because I got uh, control over the right side bush. But also they have an echo jungle. And I know that he's either going to start wraiths or red buff. So the ward is quite greedy. Be very careful when you go for these wards. Because if the support is in the bush, like next to the, you know, um, or behind the red buff then you can get poked really hard but I decided to flip it because it's echo jungle and I can get some valuable information which I do. He doesn't know it's warded I think so that's pretty good. He starts wraiths so we know he's going to do wraiths, red and then krugs and he might invade after that but yeah it's pretty valuable information. As for the lane it's pretty straightforward Zed versus mage. We want to stand close to our minions and hope that he uses his Q on me and the minions and preferably we would dodge out um, of the damage in time so that the t wave can just push towards us um, for the first few levels and the first few waves that's what you want and then after your first recall it becomes opposite so you want to make the enemy mage choose between hitting the minions and you so you would stay away from your minions after first recall and you come back to lane luckily here we get a good little shove into our tower so he crashed the first two waves which is ideal and it's kind of what you want um, you know, you don't want them to stack three waves. That's your whole goal for the first few minutes of the game as Zed versus Mage or Zed versus Ranged in general. So now the wave is pushing back towards him. So we want to just try and get level three first. And that's something you can do. I got it slightly before him. You can get level three first if the first two waves crash. And if the first three waves crash, then you can try to get level four first. But that's like more of a long game. I went in because I was thinking Warwick was going to gank, but he was just kind of trolling me a bit. Just standing in the bush for too long, and then he comes back in now. Um, so he's like griefing me really hard with my wave, because he's soaking my XP. And right here I have the W, because I'm scared he's going to die. <laughs> so I just dodge, or I mean I tank the Q for him. But he's trolling really hard, because he soaked a lot of XP, so I don't get level 4 off of this wave. Which is really sad, because you always want to get level 4 off the 4th wave. And uh, that will give you advantage usually in most matchups, which is kind of sad. And we shove this fifth wave. So this is what usually happens if you let the enemy mage crash in the first two waves and then you slow push the next few waves into the enemy. Uh, you get level four first and then you can crash the wave after you hit level four as well. So the fifth wave, I think. And that will be that's pretty useful. I mean... Right here, it's really scuffed. He flashes. It was kind of obvious he was going to, but, you know, when you think that's going to happen from Zoe, make sure you do it by a reaction. Um, so it's very important to react to the Zoe's flash and react to the Zoe bu bubble instead of trying to predict it um, because there is a good timer for you to react um, as long as you're just watching his character. But yeah, this is the first few levels and laning phase against Zoe. So your whole goal after getting Boots and Double Longsword is to get 875 gold for Pickaxe, which will give you a big spike. So I kind of get poked out a bit too much, but I realize that Zoe has no flash and Warwick is around. So this is actually an opportunity to kill her, especially because I have ult to help out. Now we just wait out the Zoe bubble. As soon as she uses it, I can just WW Auto E and then use my ult and Q. We got the kill. And then we shove the next wave and we're looking pretty strong because we'll be able to buy pickaxe and glowing moats, I think. So I end up poking out Zoe and she's now 550 HP. I know that I have electrocute and I can kill her if I proc it. So on this wave, I'm only using my auto attacks, waiting with my W. And a thing you can do against Zoe is if she uses her ult like that, if you're able to react quick enough, you can kill her with a WQW auto E. So... Make sure you keep a good eye out for that when you poke out a Zoe and she's like 500-600 HP. Don't use your spells on the wave, just wait out a bit. And if she does that, then you can try and kill her. Right here, I'm just uh, taking Echo's ult as well, which is good to do. Um, just trading ult with Echo and getting much more impact. Now if Echo ganks a lane, he's not going to have his ult, so he's probably more likely to die. So I want to show you guys some things against Zoe. Um, 
right here, when she uses ult, you can use her Qs either on where she landed or where she's going to land if you time it accordingly. And also note how I don't panic and use ult or take the W without seeing her bubble animation. Right here, my Warwick is just trolling me, so I'm like, okay. Um, I walk up and I ult. It's important that I walk forwards right there because I know that Zoe's probably going to use her ult or she's going to chase for the Warwick kill. Um, I almost died to tower, but we survive. But as I was saying, when she uses her ult, you can throw the Qs where she ults, or you can throw it where she's about to go back, depending on the timings. And make sure you don't use her ult or your W without seeing her little bubble animation, like the beginning of it, and then you use your reaction against it, basically. So now it's minute 12, I have teleport and Zoe's gone to base. I push mid, and around minute 10 to 12 is when you want to look for the plays in the side lane, where you teleport behind them. Usually it's just bot lane, because bot lane is broken as hell since every season ever but anyways <laughs> we just go in we kill jinx and then i waste ult on milio which is a mistake because there's no way i can kill him it's just very greedy but yeah looking for those tps is very important because they open up a lot of advantages for your team uh from minute 10 to 14 so don't use your tp to go back to lane on at those like times or minutes and just hold it so i'd say like minute nine maybe actually as well so now I'm back in lane, it's around minute 13 to 14. I have Axiom, Brutalizer and Double Longsword. I know with Electrocute, I'm very, very strong and I can one-shot Zoe if she uses ult. So on these two minions, I walk up, she uses it. So I just go straight in and I use my combo and everything right there. I didn't react to his E, but luckily he used it anyways. Um, just because I knew I would one-shot him and I'll probably very likely get away from the bubble. Um, uh, for the tower, I mean, uh, after getting CC'd. So I'm pretty fed, but I'm going to show you guys what happens when you don't jump over the Zoe bubble. So I just go in and tank it, and it gets CC'd for so long that I have to flash. And then I have to auto profane. I missed my E, but at least we killed him. Now the mid game has arrived where we go to a side lane. It's a very nice time because we can try to get towers. And right here we have four grubs and we have a cannon wave. So I know for a fact that I'm just going to commit straight onto the tower. Even though I have teleport, I'm not going to use it because Olaf is top and he's actually quite strong on the team as well. So I don't want to fight without him. And we commit to the tier 2 tower. And doing this more often than not is quite good uh, because you get a lot of gold. Especially when you have grubs and you have a cannon wave with you. That means it's very likely that you'll be able to get it. And I'm thinking about moving but then I don't because I have teleport. Which means that I can take this tower here. We mute Kogmo because he's spam pinging. Make sure you do that, otherwise you guys might lose focus, like I do. And right here we have the Hex Gate. Now Olaf is mid lane. I'm very happy with that because I'm pretty sure I can just come in through the flank. So, we take the little plant. We walk through. We're going to go straight on Zoe. He walks straight into me, which is good. And then I walk up to this Milio, and before ulting him, I auto E because I know that I'll need my W again. So, it's very important to always do that whenever you can or whenever you have the chance to. Walk up to them, auto E to get your W on a lower cooldown before ulting them. And then you E them again and you have W and it's very, very, very good. Especially right now on this patch with the items and everything being weak. It will just make you much stronger. And now my Warwick is going to take Dragon. I'm really strong. I have Profane, Axiom, Grudge and Double Longsword. So I want to fight. I combo this Milio as he walks up. But I don't use E because I know I want to engage. So I take my W, I ult and then I E in. Uh, just to get a lower cooldown on my W. We use a W right there, take the ult shadow, looking cool to kill the Jinx, and Emilio flashes away, which is quite sad. Echo comes through, and I kind of want to try to kill him, which we are able to. <laughs> and then I'm trying to run, I flash away. Uh, Zoe gets baited in a bit, but he flashed away as well, I think. And then I walk bot to farm, but Zoe comes on a ward, and I know he's going to greet for my kill, so we just do this. Ult to E, ult, and then profane straight away to kill him as fast as possible. And yeah, he threw the bubble the wrong way as well. Just quite lucky. <laughs> we take the freebie. My Warwick and my Rel end up getting caught. So the enemies try to go for Baron. And I'm kind of scared they might actually get it. Even though Zoe is bot because he died. And we just go in. I think I use my W and then I wait a bit. Just waiting for a better chance or waiting out the Orn ult. And then I realize, ah, I really need to kill Echo. Otherwise he's going to get the Baron. And then... I just get it and I'm like, well, that's kind of lucky. <laughs> I don't think Echo had Smite or something. I don't know what happened there, but yeah, we kill some people. We get the Baron. Warwick chases people down, I think. Or maybe I do as well. Let's see. 
WW Auto E on Milio. Luckily the Zoe bubble misses as per usual and uh, yeah. Right now I'm just waiting for someone to come to the bot wave. We find Zoe, he uses his bubble on the minion, so obviously he's dead. But the main thing here is don't be too shy to use your ult, um, especially in the late game if you're going to kill someone. And you have Axiom, you get your ult back pretty quickly. Um, just like the good old days, it's like 30 second cooldown, but you need the Axiom, so <laughs> yeah. Right here we tried to catch Echo and unfortunately it was kind of just a bait, so I'm like whoops, this was actually really bad by me. We're able to poke Melio out, but I know that I can't go in. So we have to play it really slow. It's very important to not go in in this kind of situation and panic like my Ude or like my Olaf and my Warwick did. So we play it nice and slow. And if I forward it a little bit, Kog'Maw starts contesting the crab and we can get a freebie on the Echo. We get stunned. We need to make sure that we don't die. But I see Owen use his jump. So I just go straight in. And then I E in as soon as I see Jinx, I auto the Jinx. And then I have a W as well. Flash as well on the Jinx to Q him, just to get the shadow closer and everything. And we can kill him. And we have the dragon up as well, so everything is quite good. Now we're six items. We see Echo on the Krux from Olaf's vision. I take the Hex Gate, I start sweeping, and then we find him. So I just WW and I ult. Auto E Profane, Q, everything. And he dies. So now my ult is already up on a 30 second cooldown. And now we're sieging bot. I see Zoe use his bubble and I want to look for the Jinx from across the map because they won't really expect it. So I do it like that and then I hit the Q on the back end to make sure that he dies. And now I'm pinging my team to go in because they have two people dead and I'm quite strong. Unfortunately Echo is respawning now and we're all using our damage on the Orn, which is very very bad I would say. We can't kill Echo in time. Warwick gives his ult. Like all of this right here is very bad for me because I don't have my ult up yet and we're playing too aggressive. Obviously Kog'Maw being top lane is <laughs> not good. But I end up using my W and then Warwick flashes in so it's very bad again because if I just held my W it would be much better. But either way we're still fighting. We WW onto the Zoe and then he's able to get away which is sad. I think I missed my Q. And then I W... Take my ult shadow and W onto him to kill him and die to the Jinx rocket. And then I just say report Kog'Maw. I think he killed some people here, but still. Report Kog'Maw. Right here I see Echo uses his Q and he's pretty close by in range. So I can just flash WQ. And I use my spells to poke him out like this. I just want to get a fight going because we're probably just going to end. Kog'Maw is just ending the game. So I just focus on the fight. We kill the Jinx and then... Kog'Maw ends the game, so yeah. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful and all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.